Do you know about the wallabies? Do you know about their reproduction and what they can do? It blows my mind. And also, March Madness is back, but you just might end up with a new favorite basketball coach who isn't even a teenager yet. You know, they say never work with children or animals. I say fooey. Today, that's all we're working with. Let's take a look on the bright side. And welcome to The Bright Side. I'm your host, Bob Herzog. Who's watched the Snyder Cut? I haven't. I'm eager. But apparently, I will need to set aside a solid block of time to get that done. Also, Falcon and the Winter Soldier has dropped. A little DC Marvel balance for you there. Share your thoughts with me about these things. Seriously, I'm curious. And while you're in the sharing mood, go ahead and share this video. Pretty please. Remember, we're counting on you. Yes, you to get the word out about the bright side. Seriously, in here, we're, we're, we're just a ragtag team of would be do gooders trying to lighten the discourse. But you're the ones who actually put us into the discourse to begin with. And remember, when you put the bright side out there today and you tell people to follow the page on Facebook or subscribe on the YouTubes, you are helping bring a better understanding of wallaby reproduction to the masses. So I love to learn new things, even when they're things that might make me uncomfortable or question things I thought I knew. It's how I grow. But this story shocked me to my core. I thought I understood the basic workings about how babies are made in many species of the animal kingdom. And then I learn about this. So this, this is the Cincinnati Zoo and Botanical Garden's newest baby, a wallaby. That alone, not shocking. The little Joey just starting to grow. You see, just kind of peeking out there after being noticed in mom's pouch right before Christmas. The mind blowing thing here is that mom actually hasn't bred, you know, bred, since another baby emerged from her pouch last summer. Now get this, a zoologist told us the embryo has just been sitting there, percolating, marinating, whatever. And the pregnancy was basically and naturally put on hold can do a thing called embryonic diapause and they can pause a pregnancy and they can delay it for up to 11 months. So that's kind of what ended up happening with Ava is so whenever they first breed, they can actually um, create up to three babies at once and then they only have one at a time. So then they can basically put the other ones on reserve. The Joey should emerge from the pouch near the start of summer embryonic diapause. I had no idea. I've never heard of that, but apparently well over 100 species can do this. Now hear me out. You're, you're, you're the fella in this particular marsupial situation. You haven't, you know, done stuff since the last little Joey was born. If you don't know about this whole diapause dealio, that could lead to some serious reality show level relationship problems. So again, share this with your friends. Who knows how many wallaby, bear, armadillo, otter, badger, and weasel love connections could be saved. By the way, all of the animals I just mentioned can apparently do this. And also, by the way, this phenomenon is often triggered because of adverse environmental conditions, food scarcity, that kind of thing. Crazy cool. I don't believe that kind of thing happens in this kind of animal, though. The Houston Zoo showing off its newest resident to just an adorable little baby elephant. It's a girl. She was a heavy baby, weighing in at 284 pounds. I mean, sounds heavy anyway, by elephant standards, though. That's just about right. Her mother gave birth last week, but this big old bundle of joy still doesn't have a name just yet. Oh, and then there's this, one of my favorite pieces of video this week. Following a big winter storm in Colorado, the lions at the Denver Zoo are having a ball charging through all that snow. Isn't that cool looking? Zookeepers say they just love it. Appa oh gosh, that's awesome. Apparently in their natural habitat, they're always looking for ways to get cool. So this is a welcome change. If they ever get a little chilly, they do have some heated rocks that they can lay on. I love that one. He steps on it. There's like nothing there. Pride rock pose, get it. They can also, by the way, retreat to their heated bedrooms. 
Hello. Now, if you're if you're checking out those lions, you're feeling pretty confident they can't get to you. These beasties are a bit closer. Look at that. These whale watchers in Santa Catalina Island, California. They got quite a show. Two gray whales split off from their migration pod to investigate this tiny dinghy. In my mind, I hope that whale conversation sounded like this. Do you want to check out that tiny dinghy? The gentle giant spent around 90 minutes investigating the boat. <laughs> I'm the only one who thinks that's funny. The gray whales are currently on their northbound migration from Baja, California, back to their feeding grounds off Alaska. <laughs> so, so what's funny is I, I think I'd be a little nervous around creatures that big, but these little things here, they, they kind of would freak me out too, at least if there were as many of them as we see here. Texas beekeeper Erica Thompson is on a mission to save these pollinators and educate people on how important bees really are. Thompson's lack of protective gear when handling all the bees really has made her a bit of a social media star, and that star status is helping her spread that message. They're vital to, to our existence and to our ecosystem. Most honeybees don't want to sting you. So I hope that, you know, by people watching these videos, maybe they can look at bees a different way. A couple of fun facts about bees. They can fly at speeds of nearly 20 miles per hour, and a bee can produce around a teaspoon of honey in its lifetime, and a queen can lay up to 2,000 eggs per day. Well, I'd say the bright side beasties have done their part. Now it's time for the cool kids. A thank you note can go a long way. But some elementary school kids notes to construction workers building their new school brought some grown men to tears. Chelsea Donovan explains. For the past few months, it's been business as usual at this construction site in Chesapeake. We broke ground in July of last year. That's TJ Canfield, project manager with Heartland Construction for the new E.W. Chittam Elementary School in Chesapeake. It's going to include three separate classroom wings that will house roughly 12 classrooms apiece. Last week when he walked onto the job, he noticed something out of the norm. I've never seen it before. Not a beam, brick, or bulldozer, but dozens of letters, handwritten thank you notes, fastened to the fence by the elementary students next door. It's incredible. So it kind of took us all by surprise. It's not something that we typically see. Canfield and crew had no idea the appreciation of the new $25 million school would leave such a concrete impact. I think one of them that stands out the most, it says, you're better than Bob the Builder. It, it's just funny to see how they look at this project. The small acts of kindness, heartwarming enough to nearly bring a grown man to tears. To watch kids look at what we're doing every day and appreciate what we're doing every day, it, it's a whole... Students who scrawled their sentiments, watching the crews withstand the wind, the rain, and the frigid temps. It's very easy to miss that message just in the day-to-day. -day. So this kind of, I think, brought everybody back down to earth. Hey, the, the kids are watching, the kids are excited. Um, it, it just gives us a whole nother purpose. A kind gesture going a long way during a time everyone could use a little pick me up. But for them to take their time out of their day to do this, is, it's, it affects everybody on the site. All the way from the general contractor to all the subcontractors. They see it and they appreciate it and it, it, they work harder because of it. And they great. Now, part of the school children's enthusiasm is that their current building is 60 years old. The new one that's under construction to replace it will be state of the art when it opens next year. But they can't wait to see their new gymnasium. I used to love PE, and so does Julie Fulkerson's great grandson, Brady. Even via Zoom, he gets the blood pumping. And recently, Julie joined him. And by the way, she's 103 years old. This video sort of owned the internet this week, and you can see why. So Julie lives in Arizona, and now both her son and daughter-in-law have been vaccinated. Last week, they took their six-year-old son, Brady, to see Julie after nearly a year of separation, and the family says it was a very special reunion. My mom is just a happy person. She's always been that way, and after her stroke, she um, could have been just a weepy 
person and uh, <laughs> just watching her with him, it just it just made me so happy. For some much needed happiness too. That video racked up like 400,000 views online and that was by say Wednesday of this week. It's probably it's probably a million now. You know, sometimes you just need the right person to motivate you, a good coach, if you will. Well, during the pandemic, many of us have picked up a new hobby in northern Kentucky. A 12 year old decided to start a basketball team. Brightside Brad Underwood introduces us to the Promise Keepers. Practice these days is exciting for the northern Kentucky Promise Keepers. Being inside a gym is a big win for young athletes everywhere. But it's a huge moment for this team because of how they came together. We actually started on Zoom. That's crazy. Yeah. That's right. A basketball team born in quarantine on Zoom. We did hardcore dribbling, so we're nonstop. We don't stop dribbling or nothing. So that so we can get their handles tight. Okay, we want to hold that ball strong. Jay Johnson doesn't play on the team. She's the coach teaching first and second graders the fundamentals of the game. And the kids just seem to really gravitate towards her and uh, different than what you see them looking at most adults. I think they just get comfortable because she's okay. small like them. Other parents get to see that too, especially when in-person practice began. And it was really magic when they did come together because they could see their faces and not just hear the dribbling of the balls and listen to Jay in person give them the confidence. Jay is already living one of her dreams. She wants to be a basketball coach. Her other dream is to do this. She wants to be a reporter. So we gave her a tryout. How are you liking Northern Kentucky Promise Keepers so far? I love it. Good, good. Best basketball team I've ever been on. What's your favorite color? Teal. Teal? Yeah. Single file one. Whatever's next for Jay, she'll be successful, but for now, it's about the girls and the game. I enjoy working with kids and it's, I love, I want to be a female role model to these girls in my community. In Erlanger, Brad Underwood, Local 12 News. How great is Jay? And are you ready for another 12 year old who is going to knock your socks off? Cool, because we have one more to inspire. At 12, this young lady already just graduated from high school and is now headed to college to double major in astronomical planetary science and chemistry. As Nyla Charles reports, she's reaching for the stars on her journey to become a NASA scientist by the age of 16. I just had a goal that I wanted to get to. Ignition, lift off. At 12 years old, Elena Wicker is well on her way to achieving her dreams at Arizona State University. Okay, the first one on her list to work for NASA as an engineer. I always like dream of being an engineer because throughout my life, I like building. Her passion for building started as an infant with Legos. At four years old, she said, Mommy, I'm going to work for NASA and I'm going to go up there. She would point to the stars. I'm kind of a nerd for the NASA size Legos. The prodigy finished high school this year, acing all her homeschool classes quickly. She just had this thing for numbers and Legos and science. And so um, I started nurturing that gift. Something Elena certainly does not get from her mom. I don't have a passion for science <laughs> or math. <laughs> When to exceed expectations, this 12-year-old genius will be double majoring in astronomical and planetary science and chemistry. If all goes well, she'll be done with college at 16. I'll be driving in one of those future space mobiles by the time I graduate college. <laughs> and off to NASA that same year. Her goal is to, by the time 16, be working for NASA. So while some of us continue to struggle with math, Elena's goal is to build rovers like the one sent to Mars in the Perseverance mission. I'm just planning it all as I go. Proving if you put your mind to it, the stars are truly the limit. It doesn't matter what your age is or what you're planning to do. Go for it, dream, and then accomplish it. 
go for it. Dream, then accomplish it. Do you know anyone who doesn't need to hear that message? So make sure and share this video because maybe someone you know needs to take a look on the bright side.